So today I wanted to talk about some things you can do to autumn leaves to make it sound a little bit more like Bach. Um, this is uh, something that Ted Green did beautifully um, on the Telecaster. Um, and um, probably Ted is one of the reasons why I started getting interested in playing like Baroque sort of harmony on the guitar, as I'm sure has been the case for a lot of people, just because, you know, I could see that it could be done. Um, and it showed me a pathway forwards. So with that in mind, I'd like to talk about a simple technique which we can use, but it's quite a far reaching and beautiful sounding thing to make back cycling progressions that are common in jazz, things like autumn leaves, um, fly me to the moon, all the things you are sound a little bit more, you know, baroque -y. Not that they don't sound baroque to start off with, but we can just turn up the knob a little bit and give us some other options of these kinds of harmonies that we can play. So very simply, um, if you look at band cycling chord progression, you can see I'm going to use a G minor there. So it's just regular autumn leaves changes in B flat, the A section. Now, if you look at the uh, thirds and sevenths, we have this guide tone line going on where the thirds and sevenths move in an orderly fashion. And this means that if we invert the chords, um, we can actually use those as a bass line. And uh, if you alternate first inversion and third inversion chords, you get a very orderly stepwise bass line. And it sounds really nice. Now, um, before we do that, I just wanted to say that we're going to kick this off with the G7, secondary dominant. So, so it just kind of gives us that sort of initial impetus into the chord progression. Um, and uh, we're going to start this by uh, thinking about different ways we can invert the chords. So let's start by using a first inversion uh, G7 to kick us off with. So that's going to be uh, this. Okay. And then um, a third inversion C minor seventh. First inversion, third inversion B flat. First inversion E flat major seventh. Oh, sorry. Second inversion um, A half diminished. First inversion D minor seven. Let's do that again. So uh, starting with this. onto another string group so let's put it on up here so starting again with first inversion so the first ones I use are drop threes and those are drop twos you can run all your drops and all your string groups um, but I just move quickly on from there because um, I want to show you the other way around we can do it so instead of putting the first chord into first inversion, we're going to put it into third inversion. And this works a bit better, actually. So if we do this, we get, I'm going to use drop twos on the middle four strings. So this is the first one. This is G over F. So that's first inversion. Sorry, third inversion. First inversion. Third inversion. First inversion. Third inversion. And then um, this is a first inversion. A half diminished chord, which happens to be a C minor sixth. Third inversion, and then first inversion. Okay, sounds pretty nice to me. We could also, of course, do that in drop three. So let's do that. This is a really nice voicing. There's something very open about it. And then, sound really beautiful but actually in order to move on from there to get to our Ted Green place we're going to simplify things down slightly so all of our first inversion chords are now going to become triads and we're going to you know not worry too much about the voices so it's going to kind of be three-ish voices I know harmony is often taught in four voices SATB soprano alto tenor bass you know it's a tradition of Bach chorale harmony going right through into things like um, uh, jazz guitar grips but actually three voices are often a lot more flexible. Um, 
And I think uh, if we're trying to want to get more of a contrapuntal sound, then having less sort of static, fixed, complicated chord voicings is, like for the fingers that is, is, is a good idea. So um, because of that, we're going to use these shapes. So this is third inversion dominant. This is a quite a, sorry, quite a classical voicing of a triad. So this is just a C minor chord. So it goes a uh, third, the first inversion, root, fifth. Is that right? Sorry, no, fifth, fifth root there, that way around. So third, third, fifth root, C minor, right? Let's see. And then next one, same voicing but major this time. And then same voicing. This is the third inversion major seventh chord this time. Okay, A diminished triad. And then third inversion dominant again. And then let's go to a straight G minor. Okay, what we can start doing is we can start using some melodic embellishments on that. Sounds really beautiful. Um, notice that the melody on the um, it's basically just root second, third, fifth on the triad bit. And then we do the same thing here. Excuse me. And then it works absolutely fine on the major seventh, of course, as well. Hey, uh, no neighbors on the on the um, on the fifths of those triads as well. But you could also uh, so you could do that on the on the root as well if you wanted. So sorry, yeah. So moving on, I just want to sort of talk a little bit about. A uh, voicing that I really like for third inversion chords, which is I like to get them quite close. Now, this is a bit of a problem because obviously on the guitar it's quite hard to play close voiced seventh chords. Um, some of them work, some of them don't. Some of them only Ben Monda can play because he grows an extra finger or uses his nose or something. I don't know how he does it. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, for mere mortals like myself, um, the simple solution is just to miss a note out. So this becomes a nice voicing for a. A C minor slash B flat. Incomplete voicings are fine provided the counterpoint works and sounds good. And if it, that works very nicely moving to an F major triad. E flat triad. And we can start the other way around. So in that example we started with the um, I think it was the uh, third, third inversion, wasn't it? Third inversion C minor seven. So in this case, we'll start with the first inversion C minor seventh instead. We'll, we'll go. We'll go from the G seven. Third inversion root. Sorry, third inversion first. Third inversion first. Third inversion third. It's the first inversion A diminished triad. So we can then thread these two things together. They lead they lead seamlessly from one to the other. So it's like this. Manning the seventh in as well, because why not on those ones? And then Okay, I hope you found that interesting. Um, thanks for watching.